So Sean, just walk me through your progress. High school, Temple to here, where's the improvement come? Where are the steps been like? Um, I think I've definitely seen a lot of improvement over these last two years here while I'm being here, while my time being here at uh, West Virginia University. Uh, I'll say, you know, through my high school years and my previous year at Temple, I feel like I struggled with immaturity, you know, not being really consistent and not really knowing how to embrace the, the role of being a factor on the field or in the game, being that it factor, being that guy. So I feel like, you know, these last few, these last few years I've grown. You know, the coaches have come to accept me and I've come to accept my role on the team and what I bring to the table. So what do you bring to the table? What are your best assets? Uh, for me, I say my best assets is, you know, I'm not afraid to catch across the middle. You know, I'm not afraid to, you know, make a big play for my team when it's needed. You know, I feel like uh, I'm a third down guy. You know, I want to move the chains on third down. You know, I do good in short routes and catching the ball and creating space and, you know, making guys miss. So, you know, that's some of the things that I bring to the table. First touchdown last week, is that right? <laughs> my second, my second. My second. first one as a Mountaineer. First one as a man. Describe that. Oh uh, man, the feeling is, you know, you work so hard for it, you know, and you know, every game you line up to score a touchdown and you go out there with the intentions of scoring a touchdown, you know, and if it don't come, you're not really disappointing yourself, but you know you could have done better, you know, so to go out there and actually execute that, you know, get my first one in front of these fans, it felt great. How much self reflection, you know, was involved in that? You said you kinda of had to learn your role and, right. uh, with maturity. What was that process like? Was it difficult? Uh, yeah, I think it was the most difficult process for me, you know, because, you know, I didn't really know how to take constructive criticism, especially from, you know, your coaches, the guys that you're with every day. You know, you're thinking that you're doing everything perfect when you're really not, you know. So to hear the truth from my coaches and accept the truth is kind of what made me kind of look in the mirror and say, you know, it's time. You know, it's time to step up and do a lot of things better and do a lot of things right. I'm going to guess that touchdown you had at West Virginia, there were more fans in the stands than the one you had at Temple. Is that oh, right? Oh, without a question. <laughs> development under Stan Hickson to under Coach Parker? Uh, you know, two, two pretty older coaches, you know, they've been in the game for a long time. So, you know, a lot of similar teachings. I think that uh, <clears throat> with Coach Hickson, him coaching in the NFL, he kind of took a more hands-off approach, you know, which I felt like I needed a coach that was kind of hands-on. You know, that's what Coach Parker does a great job of, you know, teaching the same things every day and, and you know, nailing it into your head to make sure that you understand that these are the things that you need to do to be successful. So, you know, I think that's the things that I kind of like about Coach Parker the most. Did you have an idea you were going to get some of that when you came here? Or was that part of your transfer process when you were investigating other schools? Um, I was just open to learn. I was just open to learn. You know, I knew coming here, regardless of who would be the receiver coach, it would be somebody that's great, you know, with the great history that the receivers have. Um, and the foundation that the receivers have put down here before me. So, you know, I knew I was going to get somebody good. So for me, it was just really being open to learn. And like I said, being able to take constructive criticism and not look at it as disrespect. We don't think of New York is a great breeding ground for football players. <laughs> so uh, how'd you, how did you develop growing up? It, it, is it an overlooked area or is it uh, to be a football player there? You know, I feel like after last week, we kind of pretty looked at now. But, <laughs> you know, I would say, uh, you know, definitely overlooked. You know, definitely a lot of secret talent, definitely a lot of dogs in the city, you know. I feel like we kind of overlooked by down south football. Of course, they breed a lot of great players. You know, we're just trying to change that. You know, me being one person is not going to change overnight, but, you know, just trying to take the steps to, you know, open the door for other players in New York that's, you know, want to play on this level, the same level as me. Did you have to go on the basketball court to get enough guys to play street football? Sometimes, please? sometimes. If we had 10, we might have to play 11, one on, 5 on 5 to get one extra guy for the game. So that's how it go. How about your basketball game? How was it? Uh, basketball played pretty decent. You know, obviously ain't good enough. That's why I'm here in front of y'all. <laughs> <laughs> was were possibly you overlooked as a football player because the stereotype that New York kids don't play football? Uh, I wouldn't say overlooked. You know, I pretty, I, you know. Coming from where I came from and playing for the high school that I played for Erasmus Hall, you know, the coaches do a great job of shopping you and, you know, getting you out and getting your film out. So, you know, I've definitely got a chance to be looked at, you know, got a chance to camp. You know, it was all about the program that was going to give me the opportunity. And the first school that gave me the opportunity, I just ran with it. Tough to transfer. Was that a difficult decision? Walk us through that. Yeah. 
difficult decision just because, you know, being in the locker room, you know, you get close to those guys. You know, you build a bond with those guys, and that's the guys that you're with every day. Like I tell these, I tell the receivers here, I spend more time with you guys than I spend with my girlfriend. I see you guys on the regular. So it's like, you know, building that bond and you talk and you practice and the things you go through and the adversity that you go through and that they help you get through, you know, you never want to really leave those guys. But, you know, at the end of the day, it's a business decision and it was what's best for me and my family. So. What about your adjustment from New York City to Morgantown, West Virginia? Oh, man. It was crazy, but, you know, I definitely loved it. I enjoyed it. And, you know, the best thing about Morgantown is they accepted me with open arms, you know, especially the fans. The fans, I love the fans. You know, they take good care of us. You know, the players, the coaches, the culture here is just so huge. You know, and they embraced me with open arms, and they made me feel great as soon as I came in the door. How you handling those two-lane roads? Oh, man. <laughs> Dealing with it. 20 years from now, you'll see the same potholes that you're on now. I already know, man. <laughs> so you talk about catching the ball over the middle. Right. It's got to be a little – I mean, it's difficult. Some people shy away from that. Is that oh, man, it's something dangerous. you think about? You know you're going to get hit. You know, what, what's that like? Yeah, I mean, it's – you know, football has its dangers to it and it's scared to it, but I think that's what make the game interesting. That's what make it great, you know. Uh, I just want the ball. You know, if I got to go across the middle to get it, then that's what I got to do. So, you know, it's not really being scared or being nervous or anything. That's what you're here to do. We're here to perform at a high level. You know, no matter what you're asked to do, you're, you're here to execute. So, you know, that's what make it fun. Some of those patterns on the slants, it seems like you've gotten really comfortable using your body, shielding people away catching the ball, is that something that you learned more here about how to use some of those other skills? In yeah, that's just you know, something I picked up over the years, you know, having an opportunity to be a starter here, returning starter multiple years, and, you know, logging them reps and logging these games. You know, you kind of understand what you need to do to get open and what works and what don't work. You know, Coach Parker does a good job of emphasizing the things that you need to do to create separation. So, you know, I feel like I'm learning them. The best thing about it is just learning to do them consistently you know, more than not less. What's your best attribute, do you feel like? Uh, I don't know. My hands, I guess. Well, running ability. Hey, Sean, um, did your dad start a football league, is that right? Yes, yes. He, don't, he didn't start a football league, but he owned a football team in Brooklyn, New York, located in Canarsie, called the Brooklyn Bombers. That's where I grew up. How does that get going? That's, that's probably one reason you got the football. Guess, yeah, uh, you know, he just... He wanted change, you know, he wanted me to have an opportunity to get out of New York City. Like, you know, we all know New York kind of underrated and kind of overlooked a little bit as far as in a, from a football standpoint. So, you know, he wanted that for me. I love football. He loved football. He just wanted to give me opportunity. So he felt like that was his best. Would you have been, I don't know, maybe a little dramatic here, would you be here today without the pass, without that? Oh, point? not at all. Not at all. Yeah. What was it like? Uh, you know, it was rough. Not a lot of football fields in New York, but we made it work. We found one. And, uh, you know, we just uh, got a lot of other kids to buy in. And, you know, they was bought in. They seen, they seen that I wanted it. They seen that he wanted it. And they kind of enjoyed it, too. And we just made it fun. You mentioned immaturity, younger. What, what changed? What, what made you? What? Uh, just wanting to stack days. Wanting to put, a, you know, wanting to put weeks together and months together and not just a few days or short periods of time. You know, I'll always be a kind of a player where I have – you know, a good month or two. But, you know, like going through the years and understand that that's not good enough. You know, if you want to be great or if you want to be a part of a great team, you know, and, you know, being on this team, we're surrounded by a lot of good players that want to be great players. And I understood that it was time for change if I wanted to fit in with those guys. Is that just something you realized on your own or did somebody say, hey, Sean, you need to flip It was around. just something I was seeing. I was just, you know, seeing the guys that I'm hanging with on a daily basis and their success that they're having and, you know, it wasn't just the success that was standing out to me. It was the way they were living outside of the facility, the way that they were carrying themselves in front of guys and the way that they were leading the team. You know, I just, I wanted that. I wanted to feel what that feel like. So, you know, I just kind of embraced my role. And like I said, you know, took the steps that I needed to take to be a mature person. So environment maybe a little bit. Right, for sure, 100%. Where's this offense overall? Where, where, where can you guys still get better? Uh... We got a long way to go, I feel like. You know, we just working, we logging reps, a lot of practice. You know, we're building our rapport. We're getting comfortable with each other out there. You know, season just started, first two games, you kind of, you know, getting them jitters out. We've been going against each other in camp 
every day. So, you know, that's what we're kind of used to. But I feel like the offense, you know, it's a lot of potential in this offense. And, you know, I'm looking forward to great things this season. What challenges does that Virginia Tech defense pose for the offense this week? Excuse me, say that again. What challenges does the Virginia Tech defense pose for you guys this week? Uh, they pose a lot of great challenges. You know, they're a great team with the with the great defense. You know, they play a lot of they play a lot of great defense. Um, I feel like their DBs do a great job. They're long, they're fast. You know, so it's definitely a challenge that you know we're up for, and we understand that you can't come into that game with your head down, or you know you will get exposed. So, you know, we taking it day by day, trying to figure it out. Can't come in with your head down, meaning we what? I mean that they're a great team and they capitalize off your mistakes. You know, we watched them. They put together great two weeks of film. These last two games that they played, you know, we've been watching them and trying to get a feel for them. And we understand that when you make mistakes, they capitalize. And, you know, we don't want to come into this game making a lot of mistakes. You know, we want to keep the mistakes limited and, you know, play the way that we need to play to win. Do you feel like you've just scratched the surface as a player? Yeah, for sure. You know, I'm just, I'm just reaching my potential. If not, I haven't even reached it yet, you know. Done a lot of growing and a lot of self evaluation over the few over the last few months, over this last few years, you know, and seeing that the things that I've done and the changes that I've made with myself and my body and you know, I've just opened the door just a little bit, you know, and maybe if I'm figuring out that if I just buy in a hundred percent that everything will go the way that I wanted to go. So Showing back to your transfer a little bit. Uh, New York guy, first year in Philly. Did you want a more rural place? Something that wasn't an urban big city, or did you yeah, right. I mean, I want to say I really wanted that, but I I needed that. I needed the structure. I needed to be in a small hometown kind of place, you know, where everybody know everybody, and you know everybody's cheering for us, and everybody wants us to win. And you feel as soon as you step out the door that everybody supports you and they're here for you, and you know that's the biggest thing that I saw when I came here is that you know they're for the players, they're for the guys, and they want to make you the best player you can be. So, you know. They told you guys anything about the rivalry with Virginia Tech yet? Uh, they told us a little bit. Uh, you know, they let us know how important the game was, you know, to the fans and to the university and how important it is to us. You know, we want to bounce back. You know, we understand that we need to win and we need to get a win on the board, an important win, a win that stands out to let everyone know that, you know, we're improving as an offense and as a team, you know. So we, we spoke a little on Virginia Tech, but more really speaking on the things that we need to do so that WU doesn't beat WU. Who's the person that talked talk, talk to you guys about Virginia Tech? Uh, we spoke to a lot of the coaches. We spoke to Coach Brown. You know, he introduced those guys as a team to us, you know, and let us know some of their strengths. Uh, our special teams coaches, Coach Coons, our receiver coach, of course, spoke to us and broke down what those guys do defensively. And, I mean, in terms of the rivalry, I guess, who, who, who was the one that you said? Oh, uh, Coach Brown. You know, Coach Brown let us know that. Experience at all with a rivalry growing up? Was there a basketball opponent or a football? Uh, yeah, I say high school. We played high school. Our big rivalry was Lincoln High School. So we played those guys. We played those guys at least twice a year. You know, in the playoffs or in the championship or first game of the season. And you know, we looked forward to it. You know, so I understand how intense how intense it could be, how big these games are. You know, what these games mean to the fans. So you know, we we come in here to put on the show for you guys. And the three coaches yeah, month. yeah. Uh, welcome to college, I guess. <laughs> yeah, I mean that was, that was a crazy experience for me. You know, one thing I could say is, you know, all of those guys that I were under for the time that I wanted them, they were great coaches. I knew that they were trying to build something. So you know, nothing bad to say about those guys. I know that they're trying to win and they're trying to create their own success the same way I'm trying to create mine. With, with the loss to Maryland in Week One, and now you've got the win over an FCS team under your belt, hmm. how, how ready is this team to take on the number 15 team in the country? Uh, we getting better, you know, day by day. You know, it's a slow process. It's a slow grind. Like Coach Brown let us know, football is a practice sport. You're going to practice more times than you're going to play. So, you know, we got a lot of time to figure out how we're going to execute and how we're going to counter those guys and, you know, the things that we're going to do. So, we're working on it. Do you look around your locker room and, or on the practice field and think that this team, are there certain things you see that makes you think the team is capable of pulling off the upset this week? Oh, yeah, for sure. You know, we – Great running back in the backfield, you know, and guys, we want to play for him. You know, we want to block for him. We want to create big plays for him and create momentum off of him. You know, we got a great quarterback, you know, that we're trying to build and get him comfortable, you know, and get back to the things that we like to do and the things that we were successful at, you know, <clears throat> earlier um, in the practices. So, you know, I feel like the team, we want to. We're closer. The coaches are closer. 
I think the loss made us closer and made us, it showed us a lot that we need to work on as a team. What you said, you're, you're the quarterback, you're, what are you trying to uh, uh, get back to, I guess? You said that you guys do pretty well. Uh, just making routine plays. You know, the coach is going to dial up the plays, and it's our job to, like I said, take advantage of opportunities and execute. So, you know, just getting back to the usual, the coach being able to call any play he feel comfortable calling and not just going out there and executing it. you got two top 15 teams coming up here back-to-back now with right. Virginia Tech and Oklahoma. How, how do you guys kind of look at this, this two-week challenge here? Uh, you know, like Coach Brown said, we take it a day at a time. We take it game by game. It's a long season. You know, we just here to show everybody that, you know, we're an improved football team and we're, we can compete with any team that come in the building. You know, if we got to go there, you know, it's going to be a showdown. So, you know, it's a long season. It's a long year. We don't we don't um, prepare differently for any team. You know, we prepare the same every week, and we just try to get better and work on the things that we need to work on. Okay. Thank you very much. Thank you.